Nigeria's United Bank of Africa swung to a 17 billion naira pre-tax profit in the nine months to September. The company released its third quarter results yesterday. Philips Oduaza, the CEO of UBA, joins me now from Lagos to unpack the numbers. Philip, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, let's start off with the fact that uh, UBA has one of the most aggressive strategies on the African continent. In fact, you have a presence in 19 African countries. Um, what is your assessment of the inroads so far, given that a number of your subsidiaries, I, I haven't even broken and even um, as yet. Are you going to be changing your strategy going forward on the African continent or are you just going to continue with your current strategy at this point in time? Thank you so much. Uh, I believe that uh, our African strategy is uh, a long-term one. We have a long-term view of Africa and uh, so far we believe that the African countries are contributing effectively. Maybe not the way you would like to look at it. Uh, but uh, so far it's been very good. In terms of uh, revenue, they have contributed over 12% uh, up to September. And in terms of deposits, they have contributed about 12%. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, profit to the entire group, they have contributed 532 million Naira, which we believe is very strong. So our view for the African countries remain very strong and uh, we will continue to consolidate. We are going to add more offices before the year runs out, two additional offices. So we are not changing the strategy. The business model is right. We will only strengthen what we have on the ground. Mm. Well, I mean, you mentioned consolidation. I mean, looking at some of the ailing subsidiaries uh, currently in your books right now, are you going to be relooking those or are you just going to be keeping a firm hold on the companies and the subsidiaries that aren't doing as well? Uh, what we'll be doing is uh, strengthening the subsidiaries. We are going to put more resources on the subsidiaries. We are going to put more support coming from the head office. We will also continue to look at their transactions. If you recall, recently we did a cross-border transaction between Nigeria and Senegal, where we financed a 234 million euro oil deal. These are the kind of cross-border deals we'll be looking at. These are the kind of supports we'll be giving to them. So we will continue to strengthen what we have on the ground. We will consolidate by providing more resources, more support coming from head office. Yeah. Well, just looking at the gross earnings scenario, um, that down 7%, uh, but relatively robust, 136 billion Naira. Give us a breakdown of the various lines of your businesses. Um, of course, things should change going forward because we know that uh, most Nigerian banks had uh, a bit of an issue with uh, over the last year or so. So things should start turning around from a gross earnings perspective as well. Yeah, um, in, in Nigeria, we think that things are going to start turning around. Uh, we, yes, the, 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 the margins uh, went down a little bit just because uh, of uh, the drop in interest rate. But uh, we believe that uh, going forward, things are going to get better and better. And we're also looking at creating more volume. Uh, if you look at it, uh, our corporate and uh, retail businesses remain very, very strong. Uh, they, they contributed our, our, our income basically came from the risk assets, 70% from risk assets, and the 30% from fees and commissions. Uh, also, Africa contributed about 12%, uh, and uh, we think that things are going to get better and better with time. Let's touch on provisions for bad debts because this still being a very big issue and I think uh, most parts of uh, Nigeria as well experiencing bad loans extensively so it, it really extends across the whole sector. Uh, 5.6 billion Naira in provisions for bad loans in the third quarter. Uh, why do you think this number is still so high and when do you expect to see a significant drop off? Okay, um, uh, the number is high for two reasons. Within the period, we also did a stress testing internally and uh, we made additional provisions for risk assets we believe are not uh, uh, are performing up to the uh, extent that we would like them to perform. Secondly, we are very, very aggressive in our provisioning and uh, we just take uh, a view, a critical view on our risk assets and uh, take uh, adequate provision for the ones that we suspect are going to have problems in the long future or in the near future. And uh, again, for us, uh, we believe that uh, the worst is over. After this quarter, we are going to see declining volume of provisioning going forward. 
Well, touching on loan growth as well, because some would say that it's relatively lackluster, only up 7% uh, in the third quarter. Uh, but also just keeping in mind that you, you do focus predominantly on the SME sector, on the consumer sector and corporates as well. Just give us a scenario uh, that is playing out from a credit demand perspective, because it seems that many um, investors out there and analysts in Nigeria say that banks are not being innovative enough uh, to ensure that uh, loans are granted to uh, you know various people that are interested in it. Or do you think that it's basically just the lack of demand out there yes you, you are right uh, when, when you look at that you find out that uh, the risk asset did not grow significantly but there is so much demand for risk assets just that we have very stringent criteria for lending and secondly what happened within the quarter is that we had some significant pay down from some corporates especially the oil and gas uh, we already have uh, a lot of pipeline deals and uh, we believe that uh, the risk assets are going to move up uh, significantly in the near future. Uh, we are looking at the corporates, we are looking at the retail, and, uh, and to a very small extent, the commercial, which is the SMEs, and so on. So we are going to have some major uh, risk assets coming from the corporates. Already we have so many of them in the pipelines. I just mentioned a very big loan deal that we did uh, across the country, across the continent, and uh, that is between Nigeria and Senegal. We did a 234 million euros. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, loans of that nature in the pipeline. So you are going to see increased volume going forward. All right, just taking a look at the rescued banks in Nigeria, is UBA interested in all uh, in buying any stake in some of the rescued banks? And also just keeping in mind that you did raise over 20 billion Naira via a bond issue. So uh, you've got a bit of capital at hand. Um, some investors are now asking the question uh, if we're going to be seeing equity capital issues uh, in the offering uh, as well going forward. Could you respond to that, please? Okay, yeah, um, uh, looking at the rescued banks, we are actually not going to invest in any of them. The reason is because we do not see any synergy between the rescued banks and our existing business at present. Uh, we've looked at it. We have uh, over 700 uh, offices in Nigeria and much more when you look at our subsidiaries outside Nigeria. So we do not see any synergy between the rescued banks and our current uh, businesses at present. Now, in terms of uh, equity, Yes, if you recall, some time ago we mentioned that we'll be raising about 500 billion. Uh, we have already done 20 billion series one of uh, the tier two capital. Uh, we are going to continue to uh, 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 proceed with, uh, with uh, the, the capital raising, but not immediately. Uh, and when we do that, we'll probably be looking at uh, private placement as against uh, doing a public offering. So we have plans uh, to do that in the near future.